This year, says the FBI, a million children will run away from home. That's double the number that ran away in 1969, the time of the Woodstock generation. Back then, the runaways were mostly from middle or upper middle class homes, rejecting the values of their parents for drugs, adventure, or just dropping out. Today's runaways are not the same. They're not hippies, and from what we learn, a few of them are on dope. Mostly, they seem to be children of broken homes, or homes feeling the pinch of the recession. 60 minutes spent a week at a center for runaways learning what's on their minds. Here's Mike Wallace. U.S. 95. The highway stretches 1,500 miles from Maine to Florida and passes through the heart of Jacksonville. If a runaway is heading south, chances are he'll travel this way. Jacksonville attracts more than 2,000 runaways each year, drawn by the beaches and the promise of an unhassled existence. But sooner or later, most runaways are picked up by the police, and the ones without criminal records are referred here to Jacksonville's transient youth center, funded by federal, state, and city grants. I don't, like I was asking myself the other night, why did I run away? Why did I do it? All I'm doing is getting myself in trouble. It just seemed like my parents didn't care and they didn't, you know, they didn't really want me around and stuff like that. Oh, it's from not being able to live at home, my parent, the way my parents act and fight and stuff. The way they pull me into it. <laughs> Go ahead and call the cops on me. I don't care. I got friends. I got, I got connections. I'm going. Yeah, this center is like most of the 80-odd runaway houses scattered across America, providing temporary shelter and crisis counseling to runaways under the age of 18. Its staff is young. John and Debbie, the house parents, are a 22-year-old married couple. Neil and Jack, the counselors, are slightly older. They are friendly, supportive. Surprisingly, perhaps, 90% of the time, the center succeeds in reuniting the runaway with his family or in placing him in another positive environment. If it takes more than 48 hours, the runaway goes before a juvenile court judge to get permission to stay longer at the center, and almost always, permission is granted. Terry, 12 years old, is a chronic runaway. His father's dead. Two years ago, his mother abandoned him. Since then, he's been running away from a series of foster homes. Terry is what they call a throwaway, a kid nobody wants. How many of these places have they actually said that, you know, hey, Terry, we don't want you? Or do most of them you run away from them? Yeah. Four of them said that they didn't want me. They didn't want like you. the one in Fernandina, you know. The lady asked me, was I going to school that day? And I said, no, you know. And she goes, listen, get out of here. If you're not going to school, you're not staying. So I got up, put my shoes on, didn't go to school. I walked out. And I go, you know, people's going to hate you for doing this. Yeah. And she said, that's okay, because I hate you, too. Yeah. You know, like that. And then and then the rest of the, the other homes that you were in, you were married from them on your own. How come? Not, it's just that, I guess, I'm nervous or something, you know. I get... I get so nervous and so uptight that I can't stay no longer, you know. I go, oh no, you know. And and just like when I ran away from this home, I didn't know I was going to run away until I got off the bus and said, I ain't going home. Now I'll take you in and show you around first, Paul. Right. It's midnight, and two runaways from West Virginia and Massachusetts have been picked up by the police and taken to the center. Joe is 16, Ed 17 both from broken homes. This is the second time Ed has run away. It's Joe's 11th time. This is Terrence. Terrence is Joe. And what's the name? Ed. Ed. I know whenever I first run away, I, and I just couldn't, you know, bear to go back and not being in like 25 foster homes in two years. You know, and I ran away from just about every one of them. Yeah, the first time I ran away, I took a, I was about 10, something like that. Got kind of cold, so I had to go back home. When it gets, when it's freezing cold out, and that you, you think of home. 
And when you're hungry, you think of home. So you scrounge around, try to find some food and stuff, and you forget about that. You just move on. When my uh, father's supporting five of my brothers, and uh, they're not working, you know. And uh, I just wanted to get out and try to do something for myself, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'd like for my father to say, uh, it's all right, you know. They had nothing really went wrong, you know, bad catastrophe or anything, you know, because nothing really did. You know, I didn't really get into too much trouble or anything. But, uh, you know, I really don't know what he's going to say or do. Ed's father took him back. But 17-year-old Virginia and her 16-year-old sister Diane weren't so lucky. Children of divorced parents, these girls, too, are throwaways, not wanted either by their father or their mother. Yes, I was sent out to... My mother shipped me out of the house a month ago. Today. No, yeah, today. She shipped me out a month ago and said, get out, I never want to see you again, don't ever contact me, don't ever write me, don't ever call me, I never want to see your face again. I said, that's fine, because I don't ever want to see yours either. And my dad was living in Denver and had, would have nothing to do with us, you know. So we couldn't turn to him. He was remarried and his you know, wife refused to have us. So we couldn't turn to him for help. Now my father loved us, but only to the most capacity that, you know, he was able to. After that, he couldn't anymore. His wife wouldn't let him. I thought four years ago when I wanted to go live with my father and I asked him and he said, no, you can't. I thought then I had accepted his rejection. But not until he turned and stepped me on a plane back to Jacksonville that it finally hit me. I just thought, wow, my mother doesn't want me and my father doesn't want me. Diane is living in a friend's house, Virginia with her grandparents. It's unlikely they'll ever return home. Another runaway picked up by the Jacksonville police is Judy, 16. My parents, we just don't get along and so I always get mad and go and then... They get over it, so I usually come back home. And it's been the same thing for a long time, and I don't know. We just decided to come forward at this time. Just 24 hours later, Judy's mother, called by the center, arrives from Georgia to take Judy home. I was wondering, like, you know, if you could save any type of thing that there was while you left. I don't know. It's just been building up and building up. How long did you plan on staying? We get low. Just want to stay and come home. Why are you calling, Judy? Scared to. Think you're going to split again or anything? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what type of reasons, you know, anything like that? Or could you, you know, work it out in some type of place up there? <laughs> Judy won't discuss her problems. She don't. She won't to me, or she won't to school counselor. And that's why we we don't understand each other because she don't tell us anything. We don't know what to do next. We just have to. So Judy is things. going back home, and the center has also managed to find a home for Terry with his aunt. You know. Well, I think he'll be all right out here with me. I don't think he'll give me any problem. As I said, I've got kids his size and. One his right. age, so I, he won't have no problem. But I don't believe that. right now is really get running in his blood, so to say. Uh -huh. You know, 25 times in two years, as soon as the going gets tough, Terry would just uh, off, tries Terry. to resolve it by running. I think that you have handed me the sign that says stop, and, you know, you've kind of told me what I'd what happened if I didn't, you know, everybody has and so it's just got deep down in me and I put the sign there and I can't move, you know, it's like a brick wall there. <laughs> and, you know, I have to straighten up and I think I've, you know, I think, I think I can do it if I try. On the beach at Jacksonville, four youngsters from the center talked some about running away. It's a high, it is a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a feeling of I'm scared to death but I'm going to do it, and I'm going to I'm going to have fun doing it, you know. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to show them that I can do that. I'm going to prove to them that I am something, instead of just their child. When I was in second grade, my mom and dad got a divorce. I didn't know who the hell to go to, who to live with. And you get that there, 
and all of a sudden a relationship goes because your father is more interested in his job. He's scared he's going to lose his job. That's right. He's got to keep up the house. Yeah. He's got to keep food in that house. He's got to keep the land that the house is on. He's worried about what's his wife doing. Where's his wife? Is she with another man? What's going on? And the kid gets away with a lot of germs, a lot of stuff. I just had to get out to see if I could make it and to show my brothers and to show my father and to say, hey, here I am, look at me, you know. I'm doing things, you know, and I'm, I'm getting out and I'm going to try to make it in the world. It all adds up that you, that to show your parents that you are somebody and that you can do what you want to do. When I lived in my father's house, you know, he knew that sometimes he was in the wrong, but he said, this is my house, this is my roof, you're right. in my bed, you're eating my food, so you do as I say. That's and I said, right. I said, okay, I'll leave, you know, and many times the situation has come where my father said, there's a the door, don't let it hit you in the ass. Uh, with my father, it's another thing. He talks about one thing, and I talk about another. And the, the string just, you know, can't get tied right. Yeah, that's more <laughs> I'm sure a lot of families... Down, you can sit down with your mom and talk things out. Yeah, you Most parents, like moms. Mom, but, if, but you... Damn it, you don't want to sit down with your mom and talk. You want to sit down with your dad and talk. Or have man-to-man -man talk, not a man-to-lady. You can't sit there and talk to your, to your mom about things that, you know, sex and stuff like that. that you know, about chicks, but you can sit down and talk to your dad, but he just doesn't want to sit down and talk about it. If my dad sees this thing, I hope he does. And I know I'm not going to come home for a while, so if he sees it, Dad, I do love you, but it's just got to change. That's all there is to it. If my father is watching this program, I want to thank him for everything he's done up to the time that I was willing to leave home. I'm sorry for the pain and agony I gave him and my mother. I really am, sincerely. But I gotta do it. It's gotta be done. It's a job, it's a task, and it's my life. On July 1st, the country's first Runaway Youth Act, administered by HEW, will take effect. It authorizes $5 million to be spent on facilities like the one we've just seen in Jacksonville.